Okay, we're going to do some more on the uh, lab one bones, and we're going to kind of specialize with the verb right now. So um, I already started showing you the distinction between the types. We have cervical with a bifid spinous process, transverse uh, foramina. We have thoracic that look like a giraffe with a long, point, piney, hmm, pointy spinous process and a V-shaped transverse process. And then we have lumbar. They look like the wings of a glider with these long transverse processes going out and a very large body and their articulations are in a sagittal plane. And then inferiorly we have the sacrum. And the sacrum is five vertebrae that are fused. This is a model but you can see them one, two, three, four, five. And then inferior to that would be the coccyx. The coccyx varies in the number of vertebrae. Three to five is generally considered to be normal. Okay, so there's the sacrum. Uh, so let's start at the superior end, and we may have to split this one more time, but we'll see. We'll go as far as we can. So we have the superior most vertebrae are the atlas and the axis. And the atlas, if you look at it, you can see that the transverse processes sort of slope in an inferior direction. And right here, these two places are where those occipital condyles from the skull articulate with the atlas. Notice that the atlas doesn't have any body, right? It ain't got no body. Wrote that song for David Lee Roth. I ain't got no body, okay? And it doesn't really have a spinous process, or if it does, it's very poorly developed. So two things it's lacking is a body and a spinous process. Now, in fact, it had a body, and that body breaks off and fuses to the axis. This is the body for C1. This is the dense or odontoid process. It acts as a pivot point. Uh, axis sounds a little bit like what a uh, car has, an axle. So when you shake your head, no, the atlas rotates around the, ac uh, the dens just like that. Uh, so the distinguishing characteristic for the axis is that it has two bodies, one for the atlas and one of its own. Okay. We already talked about characteristics of the circle. We're quick, quickly reviewing. We have bifid spinous process. We have an oblique articulation, and that helps in movement. We have the transverse foramina that are part of the transverse process, and the vertebral artery and vein pass through that. Vertebral artery serves the brain. This is actually made from a rib element that uh, fuses to the transverse process, and when it does, it makes like an arch. That's where those holes come from. And um, so some of you are probably thinking, I thought that the ribs were only in the thoracic region, all the vertebrae had ribs when you were an embryo. Then we have thoracic, a long spinous process, V-shaped to the uh, transverse processes, articulations are coronal. And we have articulations for the ribs. So there is an inferior costal demifacet, a superior costal demifacet, and a transverse costal facet. And um, those are characteristics that are only found on the thoracic. The lumbar have the transverse processes going out like the wings of the glider. Sagittal articulation, uh, which means that you have flexion anterior and posteriorly in the lumbar region. Blunt spinous process that doesn't point inferiorly, goes straight back and it's relatively short, so short blunt spinous process. A large body to accommodate the greater mass. Okay. And then the last thing we have is the sacrum. We have posterior sacral foramina. We have anterior sacral foramina. These are all fused. And it turns out that it's not just vertebrae here, but there are also sacral rib elements that have fused into this part. Coccyx, very poorly developed. Usually at least the last, inferior most, are fused together. Sometimes all of them are fused. And you can see it kind of curves, gets its name because it's supposed to look like a cuckoo's beak. I guess so. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> And that wraps up our...